Scott Wilkinson here, Director of Content for AVS Forum, and I'm here with uh, AVS founder, David Bott, and uh, CEA, President and CEO, that's a mouthful, Gary Shapiro. Thank you for being here. I'm honored to be here sitting with you. So, CEA, Consumer Electronics Association, the organization behind the giant CES show in Vegas in January, is also behind this event here. Uh, sort of a mid-year check-in, is that what we're doing here? Well, we're, we own and produce the CES in Las Vegas. This is where we have partners and we're, it's a little more free-spirited here. This is an event that was designed seven years ago and it was aimed at the New York Wall Street marketplace where there was a lot of money and we felt they had to be educated about our technologies. You know, in 2008 though, things didn't go well on Wall Street and we moved this event in Midtown and we aimed it at the entire industry as a summer check-in, as an alternative for some of the bigger companies to reach the press without their own press or dealer events and for startups as a way of reaching the entire press community in a way that's very cost efficient. So for this event we have over a thousand registered press and analysts as well as some five or six thousand attendees um, from the industry gathering in a rather intimate format. It's not like the CES. It's very free willing. CE Week is something where if you're just part of the consumer electronics industry and want to be here, you're welcome to participate. And it's a very different format. Now, I must admit, uh, when I've, I came here several years ago and I was very supportive because, as you say, it used to be that each manufacturer held their own separate line show and showed off their products that they maybe first introduced at CES, but then later in the year it's actually coming out and they brought the press in. Very inefficient. This seemed like a much more efficient way to get everybody together to see all the new products in one place at one time. That is totally the plan. I mean, it is very expensive for the manufacturer. It's time consuming for the press to go from line show to line show around the country, if not the world. And uh, the intent here is to, to make it more efficient. So if you're a journalist, you could see a lot all at once, come back with several stories. If you're a retailer, same thing. And you don't have to take out several weeks mid-year to get all the information you could get here in three days. So you have CES, obviously, which is a larger scale of this, if you will. You have press from all around the world. Here you got a nice intimate setting, which is what we really like, by the way, as press. It's great because you get to talk to everybody you need to, you know, the who's who, if you will, of the industry. Do you foresee this growing more along this line here at this location or somewhere in New York versus CES? I think we're going to regroup after this event. This location is fully sold out. Um, it's an attack capacity. It has the advantage of being convenient and it's midtown. It's intimate. It works. But growth is a good thing. We have companies that want to participate that can't. And I think, you know, we'll have to look at alternatives. Now, what can you tell me about the state of the consumer electronics industry overall? I mean, 2008, of course, we had an economic downturn. It affected everybody in our industry as well as every place else, just about. Uh, is it coming back well? Or what's, uh, what's the health of the industry? Well, it depends who you talk to and what they're selling. I mean, 2008, you know, we were doing really well. We had HDTV was still very hot. We had a lot of products which were being introduced. And two things happened. We had a little bit of a slowdown in the economy, to put it modestly. Housing, slow, you know, starts slowed down. And in certain categories, there was a lull. In the video category, for example, and the, the big thing was the overhyped 3D. And it didn't meet the expectations that some people had. You know, to me, it was always a nice feature. It's, it, it's interesting for some people, but it's not. You're talking about 3D. 3D. So now, um, as of this moment in time, there are three hot product categories that are doing really well. Uh, smartphones, tablets, and headphones. And they're all great categories, but that doesn't sustain a lot of major retailers or, or um, bigger companies. So I think we're about on the cusp of doing, going into two categories that are really big. One is Ultra H K, HD 4K, which I think is very exciting. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be as big as HD TV because it's, you, we're, we've gotten used to the widescreen and a better picture. This is a really better picture, and it's, it's going to start out pricey. Um, but it's not going to be the disaster that, that uh, 3D was, honestly. So, and then the other technology, I think, is we're going to see some real growth in high-performance audio. Because uh, our research shows that consumers want it, they're willing to pay for it, 
uh, there's an interest from the music industry and from electronics companies to really focus on it. And I think the headphones focus actually helped um, position all high performance audio very well. So we've gone from the convenience factor of the uh, experience, starting with almost the Walkman and going all the way to uh, MP3 players, where the quality was less of a factor more than the portability, the convenience, and everything else. To now, we're we're ready to go back to high quality, really good sound that makes a difference in your life. So, do you see anything in regards to this show, or maybe CES, um, or opening up to con to consumers to be able to come in and see the show, or are you just going to leave that to the press to show you know what we see here? Well, the old timers will know that in 1996 we opened the summer CES to the public as a way of exposing people to our products and also helping the show stay alive and it lasted for a couple of years but I, I believe that consumer show, consumers are really not part of the big trade show experience the companies that are showing products what they want to do is they want to reach the trade and the press with products that are coming in the future they want to reach consumers which are products which are here today and the job of the media is to basically filter or, or be the editor or the curator of what is good and what is not. And there's plenty of media, especially today now compared to 1996, of blogs and things like that, which, which can do that. So I have no great desire to go through that experience again. Well, certainly, <coughs> pardon me, the, um, the CES show has grown to such numbers. Uh, over 150,000, every hotel room in Vegas taken up. I mean, if you added consumers to that mix, it would be, it would be completely untenable, it seems to me. Well, you're right. Um, I thought you were talking about this event. But, but this, um, no, it's not, it's not possible in Las Vegas even. So the way Las Vegas has more hotel rooms than any city in the world, it has over 150,000 rooms. And not, you know, some people fly in, fly out. Some people live in Las Vegas, drive in from California. But our goal is to keep that event under 160,000 people. So we actually are very, very careful the people we let in from Las Vegas and, and California. Um, maybe less so if they're traveling from overseas. You know, we, to verify whether they're with a trade or not, it's much more difficult. But we do um, try to control the quality. And uh, our goal there is to make sure it's a meeting place, not only for the consumer electronics industry, but for everyone related to innovation, whether it be in the motion picture industry, the broadcasting, cable, satellite, phenomenal growth in automobiles. The show has grown every year for the last few years. It's likely to grow this year. I mean, by a tiny bit, we're just out of space for 2014. We don't have any additional space. So we're looking at probably around 1.9 million net square feet of exhibit space and about 3,000 exhibitors and about 150,000 people. Gary, what I'd like to also say is thank you to the CEA and the organization for the things they do within the government agencies uh, to try and helping you know our technology and entertainment industry and pushing things and getting things done for the consumer. So without standards and what have you, um, we wouldn't be where we are today. And thanks to CEA for a lot of that. Well, thank you for recognizing that. You know, we are a trade association. We do more than events, but we have a lot of people in Washington who are engineers, policy people, lobbyists. Um, communications people and the, the job is we define it is to make sure that our nation because we define ourselves as the United States as an association the trade shows international but our mandate is US companies and the United States will remain a strong healthy economy where innovation can be fostered so we're pushing for things like immigration of the best and brightest people the people who get the PhDs at our universities we don't want to kick them out um, also that we need more spectrum for our products to work. There's a spectrum crunch, and we spent a lot of time and energy to get to the point where there's about to be a spectrum auction, a broadcast spectrum, and hopefully more government spectrum freed up. Uh, also, um, there's something's really come up in the last few years. It's, it's gotten worse and worse every year, and this issue of patent trolls has been absolutely amazingly huge, affecting almost every company. Detriment to the industry, things like that. It's terrible. The spectrum, that's the new gold rush. You, you, spectrum is everything going forward, like water, if you will. It, it, it's the new gold rush. So I'm glad you brought that up, and I'm glad you guys are helping to watch for that. Because without the CEA, a lot of people might not realize what they do. They don't just put on a great trade show like this one or CES. They do a lot for the for the industry itself. Obviously, they are in the industry, in government, and everywhere else. So we appreciate that.
So our focus is on promoting innovation, allowing new entrants to come into the marketplace, always, even if they're disruptive and they affect existing business models. Uh, we've never asked the government for a penny. We don't do that. We, we, we do want high quality education in the US, but we don't talk about money. Um, and we, uh, we just want a very strong nation. And, and our theory is, is it when you have a, the challenge we face as a nation, where you have growing costs of entitlements in government, you have an issue with the revenue is not meeting the growing cost. Some people say higher taxes, some people cut government spending. What we say is, we're not going to get involved in that. We think you have to do both. We actually support the uh, bipartisan commission that came up with um, proposal mode. But we say, look, we have to focus on the economic growth. Growth comes from innovation. So innovation, and innovation is who we are as a nation. You know, we have almost every internet company started here. We have the chip companies. We have great companies like Apple and others. So let's focus on how we could grow through innovation and make that our national strategy. And that has become a bipartisan. We have the, uh, something called the Innovation Movement. Over 200,000 Americans have signed up for it. We have a website where people could sign up. Innovation Movement, go to it. And it's... Uh, Innovationmovement.org? Uh, yes, I believe so. Um, it's on... Yeah, yeah. And you could flash it on your screen, hopefully. Yeah. But it's... Um, and that's what we're pushing in Washington, is this whole innovation strategy. One last, one last question. Does CEA get involved in standard setting, technical standard setting, like, for example, the new uh, UHD uh, broadcast standards or anything like that? Yes, we do in two ways. We have a team of engineers, uh, and we're an ANSI certified American National Standards Institute. And, you know, we've, we've created standards from everything from the RS-232 back of the computer to the... Um, stereo television. In terms of the high definition television, we're involved in a, the Advanced Television Systems Committee. We sit in the Executive Committee. In terms of Ultra HD, there's a lot of different groups working on it and we're engaged with them. So we set about 20 or 30 standards a year ourselves in all sorts of different categories where there's an industry demand and there's a, we go for consensus, which is very difficult to measure, and we follow due process and we try to do it fairly fast so we're not too late, but, and we support other groups that are doing something, so we try not to overlap. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, Scott. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be with both of you.